Welcome to the LCTV show, a program that highlights community organizations in the Lynn community. With me today, I have Chief, Chief Executive Officer Bridgetta Damon and Chief Program Officer Lillian Romero. They're with Lynn Economic Opportunity. We're going to speak to them today, get to know what they're doing with Lynn Economic Opportunity and all the great things they're doing. So welcome back, ladies. Thank you very much. Thank you for having us. Not a problem. How are you guys doing? Good, yeah. thank you. All Happy right. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you as well. This is a you know, short week, short week for everybody. So I know great times are great here. So you guys, both Chief Executive Officer, Chief Program Officer, big titles. So you guys are pretty important at Linda Economic Opportunity. So can you just tell the audience how long you've been, how long you guys have been with Linda Economic Opportunity, and just some of the things that you guys have to uh, are responsible for. Okay, um, I've been with the organization for three and a half years. Lynn Economic Opportunity is the area's uh, community action program. Mm -hmm. There are 23 community action programs across the state. Um, our uh, service area for Leo is Lynn, Nahant, Wakefield, Swampscott, Lynnfield, mm -hmm. um, and we provide Head Start services, early Head Start, uh, fuel assistance and weatherization programs at the agency mm -hmm. and um, we really welcome this opportunity to get information out about the programs the eligibility and to encourage uh, people who are eligible to come in and apply for services okay. I've been with the agency for two years and as a chief program officer one of the key things that I am focusing on um, since I started the agency is the community engagement part mm -hmm. of it um, so we are heavily involved in the community. We've been doing in the past two years a lot of outreach so clients, uh, potential clients, know what services we have at Leo. So those are the things that we've been concentrating a lot. Um, on top of that, of course, making sure that our programs are running smoothly, mm -hmm. that clients know where we are, that we're accessible to them, and on those occasions where you know they might not be able to come in to find the information, we are in the community letting them know what are the services um, that we have and how they can have access to those services. Can you can you just enlighten us on some of the programs that you guys offer to residents in the Lynn community? As Brigitte mentioned, we have early uh, Head Start, our regular Head Start program. We have fuel assistance, which is starting, and so we are heavily mm -hmm. promoting that program. And anyone who qualifies for fuel assistance can also qualify for weatherization. So we are right now in the winter season. That's the time where we concentrate on fuel and weatherization. Uh, and with the fuel program, um, just how long is that? When do you guys start and when, do you guys, when is the cutoff time for that? Uh, the program um, begins at began in October. We began accepting applications and we run through May. Um, the important thing to know about that program is that we serve people that are up to 60% of area median income, mm -hmm. which means for a family of four, you can earn up to $66,000 a year in your household and be eligible for services mm -hmm. for fuel. And for weatherization, it's the same um, income guidelines. And if you're, you're eligible, if you're a homeowner, um, if you're a renter and you live in a, a building that has four or fewer units, um, your landlord could qualify for weatherization services. So if you feel that you're not getting adequate heating in your apartment or the heating system is either inoperable or um, unsafe, mm -hmm. we can come in, we can do an assessment and determine whether or not that heating system needs to be replaced. Mm -hmm. um, for fuel, we cover um, oil, gas, electric heating, mm -hmm. as well as if you are an uh, renter, sorry, if you're a renter, Enter, and your uh, heat is included in your rent, you may be eligible for a payment, um, which is basically um, a reimbursement for the, the funds that you're paying toward the heat. So those are important things to, to know about the program. Yeah, and Lynn is a very diverse community. A lot of, um, in, a lot of uh, residents, English isn't their first language, so they might not know that this uh, program is available to them. Now with those particular residents you, you guys have in place um, people that are able to assist them, those that um, English isn't their first language? Yes, we do. We have um, uh, 
language access within the department. Um, mm -hmm. We have Spanish speaker, Khmer speakers, and we also have access to any language. We have a translation service that is available. So if you were to come into the office and there is a language that somebody speaks, um, we would be able to get translation service available for that person. Mm -hmm. So if there's somebody listening to the show mm -hmm. um, that knows of somebody in their community that language is not uh, English is not their first language and they're um, reluctant to come in, um, they should certainly do so. Um, and as well, anybody who's watching the show and they have a neighbor or somebody who's disabled or elderly and they know that they're reluctant to come forward for services, they should come and or call us or go on our website to get the information and provide it to the person in their community that um, does, is, is not warm this winter. Well, definitely, because this, this is a time the weather starts changing and, yes. you know, so some people aren't fortunate enough to have eat. Uh, with weatherization, can you just um, go into a little bit about that? So one of the things, as Brigitte said, is if anyone who qualifies for fuel also qualifies for, for weatherization, uh, one of the things that we would do is that one of our staff uh, would go into a unit and do an audit. Um, so if they're not using uh, light bulbs that are energy efficiency, so those are the things that we can also come in and replace a, uh, the light bulbs to ensure that that family is saving money. So, mm -hmm. And that's part of the audit that we do. Uh, Brigitte mentioned that if they're having a heating system that it might not be working um, or it's, um, it's, it's already broke down and it needs to be replaced, we can also do an assistance on that. Mm -hmm. And those are the key things that sometimes people don't realize is that a lot of the energy goes out, not out the window, but other other areas. So insulation is another thing that we sometimes will also assess to see okay. how well insulated houses. Um, and those are the key things that we want to make sure that people understand is that it's services um, are also available to landlords. Mm -hmm. So if they qualify and they meet the income guidelines, lines we are there to support them yeah and that's also uh, it's also another thing with the insulation because some people might just have uh, be bringing home a new child home and being insulated is very important to for the child's health Exactly. So mm -hmm. as a community action agency, part of the what we do in the winter season is also education about, you know, ensuring that they don't heat their home uh, with uh, by using their stove. Um, so those are the things that we say, you know, we are your community action agency. Please come and see us. We can um, help you, um, especially, you know, if there are children um, at home. But there's also another thing that a lot of people don't know is that they can get a discount mm -hmm. as well on the utilities if they meet an income guidelines and the discount has increased this year to 25 percent. Um, so a lot of times people are paying just a regular rate when we can also ensure that they're also maximizing their resources by applying for that that discount. And quickly, um, you said uh uh, with the heating of their homes with the stove, that causes carbon monoxide, correct? Well, there's, it's not healthy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and we have an older house in stock here in Lynn. So one of the things that we also said is that it's not healthy to, to do that, mm -hmm. especially if you have children. You know, they, the children could actually end up burning themselves because the tendency is for a child to be distracted to something like that. So, yeah. so we encourage families to please don't do that. There are resources. Please come and see us. Our staff is well trained and can definitely facilitate all of that. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the things that we say to, you know, to, uh, to your audience, please make sure that if you know someone, please let them know. Let us do an assessment and see how we can help that family. All right. And uh, so other services you guys provide, I saw that you guys have an emergency assistant uh, service. Can you explain a little about that? We work together with the other organizations within the city that provide emergency assistance for either utilities or um, rent. Okay. So we do have the fuel assistance program, but some people may use up their full um, benefit mm -hmm. during the winter, or they may not be income eligible for fuel, but there are other resources that are available in the community, so we work together with um, churches, St. Vincent de Paul, um, all the other organizations, and we know where there may be funds available to help that family. So again, as Lillian mentioned, um, people shouldn't be worried too much about the income guidelines. Just call, come in, and we, we're the experts we can help to determine what you're eligible for and where, you, where, you, where we can plug you in for assistance. Okay, that's, that's definitely great. Um, and how People that do use that service a lot. You guys, do you guys get a high demand for that service, that emergency assistance service? 
We do. I think um, I think that there is uh, definitely we need to get the word out mm -hmm. um, and increase our visibility. And as Lillian had mentioned earlier, the access mm -hmm. um, that we are going out into the community. Um, we've been visit. Lillian's been visiting um, churches, um, soccer fields. Uh, pu the public schools have welcomed us in to provide okay. information about the programs that we provide. We again partner with other low-income organizations. Or organizations that assist low-income individuals and families to make sure mm -hmm. that they understand what the resources are that are available. And primarily, that's to maximize the income that people have. Mm -hmm. um, Eighty percent of our families um, that are not elderly or disabled are working. It's just that they are not earning an, enough to mm -hmm. um, be stable. So okay. these are the types of services that help them to maximize their income. So if you're receiving eight hundred dollars in fuel assistance then that's $800 that you now have either to use toward your rent or fuel or medication or uh, medication food I should have said mm -hmm. or medication so it's all about um, providing benefits that then allow that family to to live adequately on the on the um, the income that they have yeah and it's very important that they know that you guys have will help will help them with that because uh, I mean a lot of a lot of times people aren't too sure where to go and stuff and you guys are easily located on Broad Street correct? Correct. Yes. Yeah, so. We are 156 Broad Street that's our main office and mm -hmm. that's where we have those services. Yeah and it, anybody can just walk in and they can just walk in correct. Yeah, yeah and I think again I, I can't emphasize this enough is people who are working and they're getting by don't think that there's anything that they're eligible for mm -hmm. and that's what we really try to emphasize is that there are some some benefits that are available to $66,000 for a family of four. Now, somebody earning that amount of money may think, oh, I should be uh, comfortable on what it is that I'm earning. I shouldn't be coming forward for assistance. But again, that's really not enough for a family of four and the rents the way that they are. Um, so that's what we're here for, is to try to make things a little bit easier for, for families and yeah. individuals. And one thing that you guys also do to help make things easier for families, you guys have child development programs. Mm -hmm. um, the Stepping Stones Family Child Care Center, can you just speak a little about that? Yes, um, so that's our program, uh, our Head Start program. Um, so that's one of the, as we, Brigitte said, we have Early Head Start and Head Start program. So those are the services that we, that we provide to families. So when we uh, have a, fam a child in our center, we do service the whole entire family. So as part of Head Start, parents are actually receive trainings um, while they're uh, in our, receiving our services. And that's a key component of to Head Start, mm -hmm. is that we focus a lot on the entire family because everyone is impacting that child. Okay. So uh, mom and dad, you know, there's always trainings and different components. We do trainings on nutrition because the value of nutrition and how nutrition affects your learning. Mm -hmm. So those are the focus areas that we have. And if we focus on a lot of different areas actually on Head Start. Yeah. But it's a key component to the difference of Head Start is that we focus on the whole entire family. Yeah. The Early Head Start um, Center, those are, we serve pregnant mothers okay. um, up to 2.9 or 3 years old. Mm -hmm. And then we have the um, our Head Start Center, which is located on Blossom Street, and that is for 3 to 5 year olds. Mm -hmm. And we have Jack Robinson Child Care Center, that's located on Commercial Street. Mm -hmm. And that is for families who have um, fun, uh, vouchers funded through the state, and that is full day, full year child care. So okay. that's three to five year olds and we um, provide 10 hours of care a day mm -hmm. and we do provide the Head Start services um, at that center as well as Lillian mentioned and there is a focus on health, nutrition, family and um, it's really a preschool that we're looking at school readiness and we're okay. testing the children. We do provide um, assessments both for the infants and the toddlers. For the um, for the preschool uh, program um, we work together with the uh, Lynn Public Schools. If we've noticed that the child has a disability mm -hmm. or seems to have some um, issues with their learning outcomes, we will work together with Lynn Public Schools to get an IESP. Okay. And for the infants and toddlers, we work together with um, Aspire to do early intervention services and they provide the services right at the center. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to identify issues that may be affecting the child's ability to learn so that yeah. when they get into kindergarten, mm -hmm. um, those things are not being identified almost too late. Yeah. Um, so there may be things such as vision or growth and development, social 
emotional um, achievements. And mm -hmm. so we're looking at all, the full spectrum and just trying to ensure that that child um, is ready to learn once they enter the public schools. Yeah, and what are, what are some of the reactions that you guys uh, receive from parents um, after, you know, the, per, the help you guys provide their child when maybe you, there's a child you didn't know that had a learning issue and you guys, through your program, you guys discovered this child has this learning program and now you're able to put a pr plan together with the parent to help, um, to help them grow as they get older and as they enter preschool and stuff like that. Um, I, well, I have uh, one example that um, I like to share. Um, we had a family that uh, came into our Early Head Start Center, and um, they did not realize that their, their child was not hearing um, adequately, and they thought that the child was developing normally. Mm -hmm. um, and our health advocate, so each family does have a health advocate that works with them as well, as well as a family service worker that works with them, but the health advocate identified that there seemed to be an issue. They um, accompanied the family to a specialist. The specialist told them that the child needed cochlear implants. Um, the family was hesitant to mm -hmm. receive that service, and they actually agreed to receive one cochlear implant but with the health advocates um, help they realized that they really needed the two and it was also an issue that had it not been identified at the at that particular moment that child would have been deaf going forward so um, that's just one success story of um, the many we also develop health and nutrition plans um, so we have a lot many children who have failure to thrive they're not able to gain weight properly um, so we work together with the child's physician and with the parents we develop a health and nutrition plan mm -hmm. and um, help the family to, to recognize what foods will help that child to gain weight okay. and um, we have a family recently where the child came in, I believe they were um, at 11 um, pounds and they gained five, five or six pounds within a short period of time. But that was with the assistance of our um, health and nutrition director, the health advocate, and our nurse. Yeah. Um, so we have many nice. stories yeah. um, like that. And Lillian can also yeah. talk about working together with um, our immigrant families um, yeah. and understanding the, they understand the importance of education, but mm -hmm. how to support that child in the public school system. Yeah, before you get to that, that that's also um, important because um, the kids are in the public school program. They're learning English. They're bringing home mm -hmm. homework assignments that um, they might need help. And you know, it was it might be hard for the parents because just because of the language barrier and stuff like that. So I mean, you could get into that. Yeah. And those, as Brigitte said, you know, we have a lot of examples of uh, how we have impacted someone, a child's mm -hmm. life, and mm -hmm. the, not just the that child that we're serving, but the whole entire family. Mm -hmm. um, because sometimes the parents, you know, um, as uh, the example that Brigitte indicated, they, they they were under the impression that everything was according to plan, the child is development. But that's why Head Start is different. We focus on, on the child, and we sometimes are able to identify certain things that might be small things that parents don't even realize are mm happening. -hmm. Happening. And that's because we are, that's the areas of expertise. Yeah. You know, we have the experts in there. We have nutritional director of nutrition who works directly with the parents. And it's the same with the, our, his, our uh, immigrant population. We want to make sure that the child continues to receive proper nutrition. Um, so we have tons of classes. Um, and recently we had um, a, um, a team of parents teaching each other about, you know, in their country, this is what they eat. Mm -hmm. So we were able to teach the others. In this country, this is what it is, a very okay. nutritional, the nutritional value of that mm -hmm. and teaching the other parents among each other. So we do a lot of focus on culture as well um, mm -hmm. because I think those are some important things. Just because, you know, we might identify an issue doesn't mean that you have to change your whole entire yeah. menu. You still are able to do certain things within your own culture. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a focus that we, we have family. It's one of the big components of Head Start. Having a meal together is such a crucial thing to a lo the life of a child. And that's one thing people could always sit down and have son agree on is food. Food brings people together. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> and yes. It, and it's definitely great that you guys have like a culture, um, a culture course, or, or however you want to call it, because there are so many different cultures in the community. You can't help it because over here you you have Latinos. You over here you have someone from Europe. You have someone from the West Indies. Someone from Africa. Yeah. So it's only right that you could bring everybody together just so they could teach a, teach each other about each other's exactly. culture. So yes. that's also great. And lastly, um, can you guys just touch on the after school childcare program again? Oh, yes. 
Yes. Um, I almost forgot about our after school child care program. Um, we do have um, a program for after school that is at our Broad Street. It's a full day, full year mm -hmm. program. And we are providing homework help. Um, we're providing um, social emotional development of the children. They We serve um, kindergarten through sixth grade. Mm -hmm. um, there are two classrooms, so um, they are uh, divided age appropriate. Um, and we provide, um, like I said, um, many different aspects as opposed to um, just coming in after school and doing the homework help we're also supporting the family and um, doing the same similar things that we do in the Head Start and Early Head Start um, program and okay. we're looking toward um, readying that child for um, college you know and or beyond mm -hmm. they may not choose college maybe it's vocational mm -hmm. or um, but getting them to build their confidence and and to do well in school so that they are able to stay on that path yeah, so yeah, at the this after school child care, you guys are basically teaching them good habits that they should have as they continue on with their education. Exactly. I mean, those are the habits that you said, you know, are going to make them successful in the future. So we focus a lot on those kind of things um, because, again, it's, you know, with the focus that um, of education is that it's not just going to going to end a certain point. Making sure that that child is confident, that they know where to go when they need help, or how to do research, and those are the things that our staff is well trained to do. Um, they do a lot of work in the summer. They take them out to different activities, so they might have to go to the museum and different mm -hmm. things because that also adds to the education of a child. That's great. Well, you guys are definitely doing great things for the community and for the children, bringing everybody together. And it's very good that. And if people want to get in contact with you guys, how can they find out more information? They can visit our website. I believe you had it um, posted, www.leo.com. Um, Inc.org? Yes. Inc .org. Something, something, like that, something like that. <laughs> I had to look again at it. I'm so accustomed to doing it on my computer. Um, and we have our telephone number up there mm -hmm. and email us or just um, you can come by at 156 Broad Street um, to either apply for any of the programs that we mentioned. That is that is our centralized um, access point for uh, applications. All right. I just want to thank my guests once again from the Lynn Economic Opportunity for coming and giving us all this great information. You guys have been great. Hope you guys come back, and if you guys have something new to tell us, come back. We're more than welcome to have you guys. Great. Thank you. As for me, this has been the Lynn Community Television Show. I'm your host, Mukala Kabongo. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, and our website, www.lintv.org. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen.